So what do you get when you have two hulls over one? Well you get inherent stability and you generally get a much softer ride and there's nothing different about that on the MY37. Uh, it is very soft riding. We were out here in a significant chop earlier on during the photo shoot and it really really handled the chop very well indeed. Riding very softly, top speed is 20 knots with the D3 220s and we could go flat out through the chop with no problem whatsoever. Very dry and very comfortable. And it's also versatile when it comes to performance too because you can go along as we are now at roughly seven and a half knots and the boat is only sipping a combined fuel consumption of 10 litres per hour but then you can go at the fast cruising speed which is 15 knots again very very comfortable and if you want to get a lick on you can take it up to 20 knots flat out. When it comes to the steering, I mean, no catamarans are exactly sporty, uh, and this one, the steering's pretty stiff, um, quite a few turns lock to lock, and she doesn't turn particularly quickly, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. This is not what that this boat's about at all. Uh, what matters is that she tracks lovely and straight, needs very little attention to the wheel at, at pretty much all speeds, and those hulls just dig into the water and keep you on the straight and narrow. Um, what does need a bit of attention is the helm setup, because as you can maybe see from the camera, I'm sitting very low here, there's very little adjustment on the seat, there's a bolster, um, but for sitting I feel a bit a bit low. And although the helm looks quite nice, it's all a little bit sparse, they could do with um, some cup holders, they could do with some better fiddles so that you can store stuff here, uh, and there's no switches here either, they're all in the switch box which is aft near the cockpit door. Not so much of a problem when you're driving down here, but when you're up on the flybridge, it means you have to run down here to turn on the nav lights or turn on the bilge pump, uh, they just need to make sure they mirror those switches on both the helm stations. So when you first cut on board this boat and into the cockpit, you really feel that catamaran shape. It feels very wide, broad and spacious. But much like the Summerland 40 that we tested four years ago, it doesn't feel roomy enough inside this saloon, I don't think, for a ca catamaran. There's, uh, it feels quite, quite pinched and the galley extends a long way. This isn't storage because it's headroom down below. Um, the fridge units here extend a long way into the saloon itself. So it means that actually there's quite a pinch point down here which you just don't think should really be happening on a catamaran. Um, on the plus side, it looks a lot better than the boat I tested a few years ago. There's a really interesting use of materials, this nice counterstop here, you've got different woods on the cabinets and on the floor, it's very bright, it feels much more contemporary and I like the feeling on board a lot more. One potential issue I think might be galley storage. Um, because these are fake, it means that really your main storage is this here which is okay, but it's, it's not huge. There's a small drawer here, which you could maybe put cutlery in, and you have your fridges down there. But as for big pots and pans, or enough crockery for sort of the potential six people that can sleep on board, I just think they need to find space somewhere to fit more things in the galley. If the saloon maybe doesn't feel quite as big as you think it should, you can't level that accusation at the master cabin. This is only a 37 foot boat, but this cabin is spectacular. It's so, so big, loads and loads of headroom. You have a completely walk through cabin as well. You have your storage in the middle and then the bathroom at the forward end. The bed is a really nice size and nice and low, so it's easy to get into. And all in all, it feels like a very spacious and luxurious space. Of course, one of the big benefits that you may forget about a catamaran is that you have totally private cabins because your master cabin is one hull, you have the saloon in between, and then your guest cabins are down a very similar sort of staircase on this side. So it's very, very private for the owner and their guests. First thing to point out is that this boat should have an optional hardtop, which the yard haven't had time to fit yet because uh, it's so fresh out of the factory. Uh, but that would really change the way it feels out here because at the moment I feel just a little bit exposed. You feel like you're on the flybridge rather than in it somewhat. Uh, but the space is good enough. You have a good wrap of seating here, nice big table, which means there's plenty of room for people to dine, uh, sunbathing area forward, and then you have your twin forward facing helm. Uh, the position is good. I like that two people can sit there and keep each other company on passage. But like the lower helm, they're just needs to be a bit more attention to detail when it comes to the finish on the helm. Some cup holders here and there, somewhere to store a mobile phone or VHF, um, but that aside, it's pretty good. So that's the Fountain Pajot MY37. Things to like, the inherent stability and the soft sea keeping of this multi-hull setup. It really, really is unbeatable when it comes to the rough stuff out there. 
The cabins are superb, really, really spacious, and of course, very private. Things to work on, I think this is a prototype boat and it slightly feels like that. Attention to detail needs to be upped slightly, especially as regards to the helm stations. But it's a pretty empty area in the market when it comes to power cats, and this is a boat that's been built from the hull up to be such a thing, and it does a good job of it.